From the gun room of the secret hidden bunker in the Rocky Mountains, I'm Michael Bain for OutdoorChannel.com and Downrange.tv with this week's pressing question. What on earth is going on in the firearms business? Data point number one. Last week, Marlin, one of the most venerable names in all of firearms, announced that they would be closing their Gun Valley plan in Connecticut, laying off some 265 workers. Initially, we wondered what that meant. Did that mean Marlin was going away forever? Did it mean Marlin would go away for a couple of years like Winchester and then come back? Or did it mean that Remington, which owns Marlin, would pick up the manufacturing of Marlin guns at some of their plants? This week it's a little clearer. Marlin will go on being manufactured in New York State in the Remington plants. But that brings us to data point number two. Has the AR-15 market collapsed? Well, the question is, what does collapse mean? A lot of interesting rumors going around the industry. ARs are not selling. Now, what happened was there was this tremendous boom after the election of Barack Hussein Obama, where a lot of ARs blew out the door. Some estimates are as many as a million new and used ARs were sold in the very first part of 2009 after the election. Well, in case you slept through Economics 101, and I did, it turns out that all economics is cyclical. It goes up, it comes back down. Clearly, the boom in AR-15s has passed. But the question is, does that mean that firearm sales are going into some huge slump? Our sources tell us that this is not the case. In fact, a lot of lines of firearms are selling extremely well, especially in the personal defense market. Let's talk about what some of the implications of this are for the firearms industry. Number one, riding bubbles is always dangerous. And it doesn't matter whether it's the housing bubble, the internet bubble, or the AR-15 bubble. Key point, the gun companies that did not drastically expand their capacity, that is, suddenly say, well, the kind of sales we're getting after the election are the sales that are going to go on forever are not in bad shape at all. In fact, our sources tell us that sales are still running higher than this time in 2008 before the election. Second point, the industry needs to come to grips with the fact that concealed carry is the primary driving force for people buying firearms. The concealed carry movement has, in essence, redefined the gun culture in the United States. There's some real interesting books that are now coming out on that redefinition of the gun culture. And the companies that are best able to meet the needs of concealed carry holders, and that includes a huge number of women who are carrying guns for the very first time, are the companies that are going to succeed in the future. The third point is, some ARs are still selling extremely well. On the commodity side of the business, the low-end ARs, say in the $700, $650, $750 range, are still blowing out the door. Some of the very sophisticated high-end target ARs, when we're looking at a $2,000, $3,000 price point ARs that are going for target shooters or people who purchased their first AR in the boom, are still selling well. A final point, the most important thing for the industry is that the AR-15 bubble and the gun sales that followed the election of Barack Obama have been overall very good for everyone because it brought quite literally millions of new people into the gun market and by extension into the gun culture. Now those people are going to be needing accessories. They're going to be buying additional guns. They're going to be buying holsters. They're going to be buying slings. They're going to be buying optics. And the industry now has to figure out who the new people are, because they're not the same people as the traditional gun market. So the answer to what's going on in the gun market is it is changing. But that's the case with all markets. The people who will succeed are the people who are best able to adapt to the new market conditions. A couple of predictions. You're going to see more layoffs in those companies in the AR-15 fields that have too much capacity, that is, that expanded too much to deal with a market that was booming. Expect more layoffs. I wouldn't even be surprised to see at least one major plant closing. 
That's our special report of the state of the firearms industry. But before we get out of here today, I want to do a big old shout out to a good friend of ours, Dave Savigny on Team Glock. Dave won Steelmaster at the U.S. Steel Challenge Championships in Titusville, Florida last weekend. He won Limited. He won Open Rimfire and set a new world record in Open Rimfire and finished third in Open. A spectacular showing by Dave from Team Glock. So, brother, congratulations. Excellent job. I also want to remind you that I will be speaking in Washington, D.C. on April 19th on the Second Amendment March. March. I would love to see all of you there. So until next week, I'm Michael Bain for OutdoorChannel.com, Downrange.tv, where you can always find the links of anything we mentioned right here. Until next week, stay safe.